Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar where we'll be talking about Indiana's Skype Centennial. Um, more about that in just a few minutes, but first I'm going to cover a couple of um, housekeeping items and announcements. Um, if you are hearing my voice, that means that you connected to the audio successfully, and that is great. Um, you may have noticed that I muted your phone when you joined in the call. Please leave your line muted. That we won't have any background noise that will be distracting during the call. Um, hopefully, you are seeing the chat window on the right side of your screen. If you're not, um, please click on the chat button at the top right of your screen. We will use that chat throughout the call. Um, you can use that to ask questions of the presenters or to share your own ideas. Um, and um, just use that as not just um, quest for questions, but as a conversation piece throughout the call to have a discussion with uh, the other participants, maybe. And when you do make a comment in the chat box, make sure that you've selected everyone from that Send To dropdown that's right above the little place where you enter your comment. That way, everybody will be able to see your comments and not just me or whoever it is defaulted to. You may have to do that again in a bit because I'm going to turn on the presenter responsibilities over and um, I think that little send to might reset to either myself or whoever the presenter is at the time. So just make sure when you're sending comments to, to make sure that, that, that everyone is selected from the send to dropdown. So this, it, this webinar is part of our e-learning lab um, webinar series, and we typically have at least one webinar a month in that series. We've had many since the beginning of the school year. I think we've averaged about since the beginning of the school year. Um, we will be scheduling more webinars coming soon, so just watch our social media and our website for um, future webinars. Um, we are in the middle of a book club right now. We're reading Kids Deserve It, Pushing Boundaries and Challenging Conventional Thinking. And it is not too late, though, to jump into that conversation if you would like. If you're looking for a professional development opportunity, a way to get connected with other educators around the state, and a way to get some PGP points to um, save for your next license renewal, then by all means, please join us in the book club. You can get more information on that in the professional development section of our website. And another great way to get ongoing professional development is by using Twitter and connecting with the INE Learn hashtag. Um, again, be using that daily um, to connect with other Indiana educators, but then also consider participating in the INE Learn Twitter chats. If you've never participated in a Twitter chat or if you're you know, newer to them, if you've only done it a little bit, this is a good beginner chat because it's not really overwhelming. Um, it's a manageable number of participants typically and a manageable number of um, tweets that are going by that you won't get, you know, really lost and confused in it. Um, every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, we have a topical Twitter chat. This week we've got IUPUI online students taking over, so that should be um, an interesting um, chat this week, so check that out. And those are every Thursday night except for holidays. And last but not least from me is the Speak Up Survey. We are um, happy to be a partner in the Speak Up Survey. Um, we've been participating as a state, I believe, for five years, and um, there's just some great information that comes from that. There are surveys for all of your students, teachers, administrators, parents, um, community members, and then other um, groups broken out in the um, school, you know, media specialists and different, um, different teacher types in that. So um, please consider taking part in that. That is some great information that we get, um, that you, your school district would get, that we as a state get, and then nationally they collect that data and use it to um, take to legislators to try to direct um, technology spending and to get us more money to spend on technology, educational technology. 
so consider doing that. And um, just one more time, please keep your line muted if you um, are on the call. That way we won't have background noise. If you haven't checked, um, taken a moment to um, introduce yourself in that chat window, please do that. Um, that would just um, give everybody an idea of who's on the call um, to be able to connect to each other. Um, but I want to move on to our topic today. If you, unless you've been under a rock um, for the past few months, you probably know that we are celebrating Indiana's bicentennial, um, and there's been a lot of different ways to get involved in that. But this came across my Twitter feed the other day. I had not heard about it um, until um, maybe a week or two ago. I just came across my Twitter feed and um, immediately got in touch with Kelly and Steve, and you guys want to share this. So um, I'm really excited to know to learn more about it because it's it's a new topic to me. But um, Valerie Engelmeyer and Steve Osterland are behind. Um, Indiana Skype Centennial, and I'm not even going to try to explain it. I'm going to let them jump in and introduce themselves a little bit more and um, tell you all how you can, about Indiana Skype Centennial and how you can get involved. So, um, Valerie and Steve, go ahead and unmute yourselves. And Valerie, I am going to turn presenter rights over to you. All right. Can you see my screen? Not yet. I can. You can? I cannot. Okay. Just a second. It's coming. Looks right. like it's coming. Here we go. I can see it. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We're so excited for you to join us today. I'm Valerie Engelmeyer and Steve, you can also hear on the call with me as well. We're so excited to talk with you today about our project called the Skype Centennial. So Steve and I are currently Microsoft Innovative Educator Experts. We went through an application process over the summer and this is just volunteer um, teachers who wanted to get some additional um, learning in on Microsoft products and we were selected and um, within that group, we have 11 Microsoft Innovative Educator Experts in the state of Indiana. And more recently, we, Steve and I were named the two Skype Master Teachers of Indiana. And so the idea for the Skype Centennial came as I was driving to school, as most good ideas come. Um, we were talking, we were taking our students to see the torch go through our town. And I just kept thinking we should do something else. There should be something else to um, celebrate the bicentennial in a different way. And so I reached out to Steve through email um, through our Microsoft group that we're in and told him my idea of connecting students across the state in an effort to teach them a little bit more about our state and the counties within our state. And Steve, of course, was super supportive and was willing to help. And so that's where we are. Um, we're going to give you a brief overview of our project and show you how you can become involved. Right now, we've had the um, applications o open for about two weeks now, and we currently have 46 classrooms registered with over 970 students that are going to be impacted by this great activity. So we're so excited to open it up to even more classrooms. We would love if you could participate with us. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve to give you a description of our um, project. You can see that I have the Skype Centennial website that Steve created for us up. It is skypecentennial.weebly.com. Great job. Thank you, Val. Uh, so I'm Steve Auslander, uh, fifth grade teacher in Indianapolis, and uh, I'm really excited about this project that Val came up with and happy to uh, be teaming up with her on this. Um, I'm a huge fan of Mystery Skype, so it only makes sense to do something within the state for Mystery County Skype to celebrate the, bi uh, the bicentennial. Um, so uh, Val, thanks for letting us uh, see your screen. Uh, so this is the, kind of the home screen uh, for, for the, uh, the Skype Centennial, and you'll notice that the hashtag for Twitter is Skype Centennial. So when you do um, you know, find, your, find out your partner and maybe uh, you guys create something to, sh to show what you uh, – you know, what you think is really important about your county, or when you take pictures of your mystery stuff, if you'll use that uh, hashtag to kind of post the pictures and all the different things you've created, that would be really awesome for us to 
get a chance to look to see all the different events that happened and the great actions that happened because of this activity. Um, so uh, the goal here uh, for, for the Skype Centennial is to just celebrate the bicentennial and connect, connect Hoosier educators in their classes. Um, we want to just connect as many classes as we can, and we're going to play a game called Mystery Skype. Now, Mystery, Mystery Skype, I think, is one of the just most amazing uh, games, tools, you know, things you can do in your classroom because it's real, and it allows two classes to play a game with each other where all, all of the, uh, the students are engaged in a job, and I'm happy to uh, shortly post. I have uh, a list of jobs that my students um, use class jobs, um, and, and uh, the goal is, as a team, using geography and problem solving and teamwork and deductive reasoning to find the other class's location before they find yours. So it's really a challenge, um, and it's going to be especially challenging to do it with, the, with counties because there's 92 counties, whereas there's only 50 states. So it's going to be a challenge, but I think um, taking that risk with your students, I think it'll only pay off because the kids will see that you're, you're willing to take risks. So we're inviting uh, any K-12 uh, educator and their class and their classes in the state of Indiana to, to, to play with us. Um, and so, again, we're going to be playing Mystery County, Skype, trying to find the other class's county before they find yours. Um, so that's kind of the objectives and the, the overview of the project. And uh, there you go. If you uh, click the instructions tab, thank you very much. So um, first, it doesn't have to be over Skype, although you know, we are Skype master teachers, as long, you know, as long as the other class um, agrees to do Google Hangouts, that's totally fine. Um, but where it says 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to probably say I need more, more like 45. Wouldn't you agree, Val? More like 45 maybe, yeah, for everything? Yeah. yeah yep. I think that was probably a little, little uh, uh, low. I think more like 45 minutes. Um, but, so here's the timeline for how we're expecting th this to kind of go down. So we would like you to please register for the Skype Centennial uh, event by the 9th, which is on Wednesday. And so in between the 9th, one, one, once, uh, once you've registered, you can start uh, with your class kind of learning about your county um, and completing something that we're going to get into later called the seven wonders of your county. Um, and that's kind of the, the sharing piece that is so important in the mystery Skype activity. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit for sure. By, uh, by, by November 14th, um, Val and I will have kind of teamed up and figured out uh, and matched you with another another partner, and we'll email you guys. And at that point, you'd like, we'd like you to please coordinate with your partner class to determine a good time for both classes to meet over Skype or Google Hangout uh, to play Mystery County Skype. We want the Mystery County Skype to, to occur on the week of December 5th to coincide with the, with the bicentennial. Um, and so um, you, you'll play Mystery County Skype, try to find the other class's location before they find yours. Um, and then once both classes have found each other, we would like you guys to do what's called the Seven Wonders activity. Um, and basically, it's just sharing, sharing about your county. Uh, and that allows us to not only just play this game uh, with, with each other and, and practice our geography and our, our problem solving, but also to learn about another county and, and, and share. And this is the soft skills, you know, the eye contact, the, the loud, clear voice, the, um, you know, respecting other cultures, respecting other counties and learning um, about about other 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 counties, um, what we'd like you guys to do is kind of share seven uh, important things about your county. You know, what's what what's a tourist destination? What's a hidden gem? What are popular festivals? You know, in, in Marion County, which is where I am, we would certainly talk about the Children's Museum um, and, and other things like that. And there, you can be creative as to how you um, kind of document your seven wonders. Last year. I participated in an EdTech, I'm sorry, Ed, yeah, EdTech Chat and Chew um, event called the Virtual Valentine's um, Activity, and I was paired with a class in Nigeria. Uh, and what we did was we made a green screen video tour of, of our city. And so we emailed kind of a, a video of, a, of our class making different stops in different parts of, of our city. And that's something that you could certainly do. Um, you don't have to, of course. You could do something on Padlet uh, to document your seven wonders. You could make a Google slide. You could use Shadow Puppet TDU. You could just keep it simple and just, you know, type something up and, and email it to the other class. But, of course, you're going to be sharing after you find each other first, and then you could uh, send um, some sort of document or some sort of cool digital creation um, 
so the other classes can can have what you've created about about your county. So I hope I hope I was clear about that. Um, so anyway, so um, you'll have your mystery Skype on the week of December 5th, as I mentioned. You do the uh, Seven Wonders activity after you guys play the game. And um, if you could please, again, share all of your creations, your pictures, and all that on the Skype Centennial Twitter hashtag. It would be great for us to all just kind of see uh, what everyone did to celebrate the Bicentennial. So do we want to um, talk about um, how to play Mystery Skype now, Mystery County Skype now? We sure can, yep. So um, this is our website. So we're going over to the resources section, and we provide. You know, I don't think I showed them how to register. I forgot to mention okay. how to register, didn't I? Okay, let me go back. We skipped the reg yeah, I'm sorry. We skipped the register uh, icon. So I'm just going there, and if you just click on the click here to register, it's a simple form. You have to do is fill it out, fill in all the sections, and boom, it uh, instantaneously goes to Val. She'll have, she has access to everyone and their email addresses, and we're just going to send you an email with your with your pair. So very simple, um, very simple there. But yeah, she was then going to click on the resources, and you know, with the regular mystery Skype, wh whether it's uh, just in the United States or if it's around the world, it's pretty easy because you just need a regular regular map of the United States, and there's 50 states and you know, my my kids know um, pretty much the first question is, are you east of the Mississippi River? Because they say yes, then you can eliminate all the states that are west of the Mississippi River, and that's 50% of the states are gone. Same thing with the world. You could say, are you in the eastern hemisphere? And if they say yes, then you can eliminate all the countries in the western hemisphere. But the state of Indiana is a little trickier. It's not as obvious as far as counties. So we were thinking maybe we would model – um, some kind, some lines of questioning that you might want to practice with your students to uh, narrow the search and kind of eliminate counties that it couldn't be. I uh, posted on the resources page about four different maps that you may want to use. Um, you might want to find the map that works best for you. Maybe you're really confident with Google Maps or other different um, uh, resource. Um, just make sure that um, you kind of uh, have an idea of which which resources you'd, you'd want to use for the mystery county Skype. So when you do the mystery Skype, um, typically you use yes or no questions. You'll want to uh, figure out what your first question may be ahead of time. Um, and Steve's going to talk to you a little bit about the roles that he has in his fifth grade class. I teach seventh grade, and we typically don't have designated roles. Um, when we do mystery Skype, we kind of answer and develop questions as a class as we're going and doing research. So the goal is to identify their location, um, and we've provided, oops, we've provided some of these maps for you so that you could um, use those if needed. As you're doing your Skype, you can have your students print these out make laminated copies or something like that. So if I were to be guessing where Steve was located, maybe one of my questions um, using this area code map would be, Steve, are you north of the 765 area code? That's a great question. So that would eliminate quite a few counties. And uh, no, I am not north of 765 area code. So then I would go through, my students would go through it and mark off the counties that we knew that it wasn't. And we continue these lines of questioning until we determine um, where our partner class was located. Yeah. Maybe you would ask, you know, does your county border another state? Maybe you would ask, um, you know, uh, is, it, is it north of or south of another county, just, just like what um, – but Val just asked with the area code. So there's a lot of different ways you could go. Um, I even included um, a map about the, uh, the congressional district, which I thought was kind of an interesting way, way to do it as well. Um, the challenge is some of the uh, counties are um, are split, I think, right? So that, that makes it a little tricky. Um, but certainly, it's a great way to, uh, to practice those geography skills for the state. So um, now uh, we wanted to talk a little bit more about those. Uh, do you Actually, do you want to talk about the jobs, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, on the, in the chat window, I uh, – there you go. Thank you, Val. I posted my, my Google Doc of my mystery class 
my mystery Skype jobs. This is my third year doing it. Um, quite honestly, the, the first year I did mystery Skype, the first year I ever did it, took me about six months to wrap my mind around it because um, it seemed overwhelming. And um, my, you know, the first Skype that I, mystery Skype that I did, I told my students, I have a feeling this is going to be a disaster. Um, and the first one wasn't a disaster at all. Uh, it was pretty good, um, but we got better and better. Um, and I've kind of fine-tuned my jobs now, and I feel like um, this works really well for me. It doesn't mean it's going to work well for everyone, but it, this is what works well for me. And for me also, one thing that I like is to have spacing. I like to have the different sections really well spaced out. Um, one other thing that I want to mention, and I'm going to post it in the chat, is that I also um, do on Thursdays uh, virtual trainings over via Skype as a Skype guide. If anyone wants any kind of more one-on-one -on -one or small group uh, instruction on how to do a mystery Skype, um, I'll, I'll post my, my lesson link that we could do over Skype on a Thursday afternoon if, if what I'm talking about doesn't make sense. I'm happy to do that as well. But um, so these are my jobs. So I start with greeters, and they just kind of introduce, go over the rules. Um, we always like to do rock, paper, scissors first to see who goes first. Um, the, the most important job um, are, the, uh, are the think tank. That's kind of towards the bottom a little bit. And the think tank, they are the ones who uh, come up with the line of questioning. And Val mentioned it's good to have the first question figured out ahead of time. But you can't really have more, more than the first question figured out because based on the answer you're going to receive, that's going to lead your line of questioning. So the think tank will come up with a question. Uh, the question writer writes it on an index card, gives it to the runner. Runner's on there as well. And the runner brings it to the filters. And the filters look at the question to make sure it's a good question. And if they agree, they'll put a check mark on the, on the index card. And they hand it back to the runner who brings it to the question asker. And the question askers in my room are stationed by the computer. And they'll read the question. They alternate back and forth. And I have 25 students, so I try to have jobs for everyone. And the question asker will ask the question. And we have something called the uh, Q&A recorder. And the Q&A recorder will record our line of questioning and whatever the other class answers. And that's really important because we want to follow the line of thinking, the line of questioning that we have, so that we know what we already know and document it. Um, and so that kind of helps us to determine the next question. But then it would be the other class's turn to ask us a question. And one section of my room is what I call um, the researcher area. And if they ask us, are you north of the area code 765? My researchers would be with laptops and maps as well. And they would look and they kind of put their heads together. And when they agree, the, uh, the head researcher, that's the, one of the jobs that I have, if they, if they agree that the answer is yes, the head researcher would put his or her thumb up. If they agree the answer is no, they would put the thumb down. And then the answerers would look at the thumb and determine if it's yes or no and answer in a complete sentence, yes or no. Um, I know I'm speaking really fast and there's, there's a lot of jobs here, but um, these are, that's just kind of how I set up my mystery Skype. One other really useful piece of information for a mystery Skype is the, the muter. The muter is important because uh, in between, it's good to press mute, and you know, I, the teacher can talk to the students, and there can be a little bit of talking, and it doesn't sound chaotic on the other end. Um, so the muter is nice, but then the muter has to unmute it when the other class needs to hear what we have to say. Also, a sign person is nice because sometimes it's confusing to know whose turn it is. And I have a, a student who holds up a sign who would say, my turn or your turn or what we are thinking. Um, but yeah, those are, those are the jobs. And again, as I mentioned, um, on the link on the Google Doc, um, you, can, uh, you can open that up and, and see my, my jobs. And as I also mentioned, I will post my, my lesson that you can register for on the Skype in the Classroom website. Um, so those are the different jobs for mystery. So we're going to go back to this instructions page where it talked about the seven wonders activity. And Steve touched on this a little bit before. Um, we really wanted something to show your knowledge, the work that you did ahead of time, to learn about your county, um, and to share that with someone else. So we have those guiding questions for you to use with your students. We talked about the different ways you could present this to the other class. Um, it's probably easiest if you pick a tool or a method that would allow you to email something or send the link to someone, um, your partner class. Um, but you could do something just as basic as sending an email list and then kind of talk about it with your class 
as well as your partner class. This is really the, um, the portion where you're showing what your students did and what they know. So we included that section because we know it's really good to demonstrate their thinking and their learning. So the timeline is really important for this project, so we're going to just touch on that one more time. So it's open for registration until 11-9, so I'll close that at the end of the day um, and probably, you know, around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And then the next big time frame is that um, you need to have your Skype session scheduled from December 5th through the 9th. We wanted to give you the whole week. We have a lot of middle school classes that are registered, which is fantastic, um, but they have very strict schedules. So it's really going to take some co you know, collaboration and working together to find out good Skyping time. So we do um, have an extension. We, our Skype master teachers group is global. And our leader of the Skype Master Teachers is based out of London. And she really wanted us to expand this on a global scale. So we've been talking about that. We will probably touch base with those who participate about um, a global extension. But I did want to take a moment and just show you other opportunities for doing this type of connection with your students. So if you can see on my screen, I am at the education.microsoft.com website. And I am signed in. You don't have to be signed in to see this section, but I just find it that it's easier. And if you click on the Skype in the classroom on the left-hand side, you can see a lot of different options that will appear. And you can see um, that there are Skype lessons. Steve mentioned that he does a Skype lesson to help teachers learn how to use, how to play Mystery Skype. We've got field trips where um, you can have an expert in the field come into your classroom through um, a virtual field trip. And then there's a section called Mystery Skype as well. So these are all areas where you can find connections with people throughout the world. I've done quite a few of the virtual field trips. My students went to South Africa. Um, they went over to um, Costa Rica and they looked at swabs and all sorts of different animals and learned about conservation of cheetahs. And so it's a really neat um, section of this website. If you look at the field trips, you can filter these by um, genre or your age group. And they're always adding new ones. It's someone's full-time job to find um, experts in the field that will talk with schools and uh, students. The other part is the Mystery Skype section. And that will give you some information about playing Mystery Skype. So there are all sorts of resources here, um, including videos and things like that, that you can click on to get more resources about using Mystery Skype in your classroom. And as we said, we keep saying Mystery Skype, but it really doesn't have to be. It can be any sort of video connection that you can make with people. Steve and I both use Twitter all of the time to find classes to Mystery Skype with. Um, and I feel like it really breaks down the walls of our school building and allows us to make these global connections that will hopefully impact our students to have more of a global empathy for the world. So, um, Steve, do you have anything else you want to add, or should we open it up for questions? I think you did a beautiful job of uh, kind of showing the Skype in the Classroom uh, platform, which is, as Val said, is just amazing. Um, yeah, um, and I, I think I think what, uh, what, what you said as well, that uh, it would be great if after we kind of tackle the state of Indiana, we, we expand and maybe th there'll be a lesson that, you know, you can register for or something like that where we get more of the Indiana teachers to Skype with, with the rest of the world. That, that would be great. But, no, I think, I think you did a great job and uh, definitely welcome any questions that, that people may have. Um, one question that I had, guys, was um, I was just thinking about, you know, I've thought about this the whole time, the whole, with all of this bicentennial stuff, that this is fourth grade, you know, gold, um, with Indiana history being um, um, a fourth grade focus. And I was wondering if these um, seven wonders um, uh, presentations, for lack of a better word coming out of my mouth right now, if those were going to be archived in some way so that fourth grade teachers would could have them to reference and utilize in the future. That's a great idea, Mary. Um, we actually didn't think of that. Hopefully people will use that hashtag to send their, um, to sh share their learning. 
Um, but we could definitely put something together where we um, add to our Weebly page so that we can add that extension on there if people are willing to share. I think that's a great idea. Great idea, yeah. Cool. And if anybody has any questions, please share them in the chat box. I haven't seen any others um, pop up yet, so um, we'll see if anybody has any. I love that you guys not only talked about the um, your Skype Centennial project, but that this you know isn't limited to only the Skype Centennial. But um, you know, doing mystery Skypes is um, just a great way to um, bring in other other areas, other cultures, in a variety of different um, subject areas within school. So it's a really cool opportunity. Absolutely. And it doesn't always, um, and um, there's other ways you can kind of connect your learning with, with other classes via Skype as well. Um, another thing afterwards, you could do a, a Kahoot. Uh, everyone pretty much knows what Kahoot is, but if you do it over Skype screen share, then you can play the same Kahoot game um, with your Skype partner. Uh, you can do it with multiple classes as well, the one game. Um, so you could, that's another way that you could use Skype uh, to, uh, to connect with another class and share your learning and practice. So. Quiet group today. Well, our Twitter handles are on the Skype Centennial website. If you have any questions that you think of afterward or um, if you even want to touch base with us, we have this global connection through our Microsoft group that we can really easily reach out and find connections. Um, I know recently my choir teacher wants to have our students sing for another class, and so within this global group, we can reach out and find, you know, a class in Japan that would listen and also sing, you know, a song. So um, we're o open to all of that. We're really happy to share um, the resources that we have. So please don't be shy to reach out to us. Um, like I said, our email addresses are both on there as well as our, our Twitter handles. Absolutely. And I just shared the website for your Skype Centennial um, project in the chat box just so everybody has easy access to that. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Well, it looks like you have answered. You've provided either enough information that everybody knows what direction they want to go or their wheels are spinning and turning and they're <laughs> thinking and they'll come up with other questions in the future. Great. Well, thank you so much for having us on, Mary. This is an honor. You're welcome, Absolutely. guys. I, like I said, I, was, I, I wish I had known about this prior. I don't know, like one day it just, you know, was right there in front of me in my Skype or in my um, Twitter feed. So I was... Um, it, it spoke to me that day, so I was glad that it that it didn't. It wasn't too late to bring it, um, get it before a few more people, and hopefully get um, get some more participants in the um, in the Skype here in a couple of weeks. So, well, we might be done yeah. early on this election eve. Give everybody a chance yeah. to get get their planning done for tomorrow and so that they can get up early and get out to vote before school and use their planning time before school to, to, to get to the polling places. Um, okay. So, yeah, if anybody, I, you know, we're going to, we'll end early here just because there's no questions coming up, but jump onto the Weebly site, jump onto the site, and if anybody who's on the call today has questions, reach out to Valerie and Steve, and like they've said, they'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, and be sure to get signed up for the project. And I'm going to just show my final slide here for a second and um, give our contact um, information, see if any other questions pop up. 
but um, so this is how to keep in contact with us um, with the Office of eLearning and um, like I said we will have additional information coming soon about webinars that we will have upcoming and um, if any of you who are on the call today are going to be at the HEC conference, we will be there on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So look for our sessions and our booth. We would be happy to um, say hi and talk about opportunities that we have through our office and um, try to answer other DOE questions or get you connected with um, others at DOE that you might need. Um, but it doesn't look like we've got any other questions coming in. So Steve and Valerie, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and share a little bit more about your Indiana Skype Centennial Project. This is a really cool idea. Thank you so Thank much, you. Mary. Okay, you're welcome. And everybody have a great evening. And um, stay connected with us on Twitter and our website. And we will see you in a learning lab or in a Twitter chat soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Okay.